Hey everybody, Sujan Patel here from Ramp Ventures. Today I want to talk to you about how to come up with a SaaS startup idea. There's five ways to come up with ideas. First, identify problems or gaps with industry giants, right? Or, um, or really, really big companies. Just go to the S&P 500, Dow Jones, look at the biggest companies in the world, in the US, and whatever country you're in, and just figure, find, and solve their problems, right? Number two, decouple, right? Think about this. The world is always decoupling, recoupling, and, and kind of going through trends. So take a company like ADP, they're a payroll provider. Uh, they do like a hundred things. If you just Google what ADP does, or you go to the website, it's like you look at the products, they do payroll, they do some form of like bookkeeping, they do some benefits stuff, they do like your books, you, they just do so many different things. Um, what if you just took one sliver of that and said, I'm gonna do that, but better, right? That's a way to come up with an idea. Another way is to recouple, right? So you take what one thing, what company does really well, one of, and you think about what else can they do. So way to re recouple, will give you the MailShake example. So MailShake is a tool to send emails. Uh, well, you need to find emails and find the right people to send emails to, and then what happens after you email them, right? So finding emails and all that stuff, or finding and building lists, identifying you know, sales prospects, what have you, is a whole business of its own. There's already competitors out there. There's MailShake, the email sending part. There is what you do after an email is sent, like a CRM. There is you know, all other parts of that, right? So there are tools like dialers and other things you can build underneath it. So that's all taking like four or five things and building into one major platform, right? Really hard to do. Uh, and that's kind of how ADP got there in the first place, right? Probably, um, but there's kind of trends you can do both. Um, another, another way to come up with ideas is just copy what others do and just do one or two things better, right? You don't have to be fully unique. Now, this business might not be the biggest business in the world, but come with an idea. I always find doing is better than um, just trying to come up with that, being stuck in the ideation phase. And then lastly, look for outdated markets. So when you find those industry giants, large companies, look for ones that you feel like really outdated. Uh, think about Uber, Airbnb, right? Uber was just a better taxi. Airbnb is just a better way to book a hotel and, and, and a better experience in a hotel, right? So think about those types of things. Those are good examples of like, disrupting the market. Now be prepared if you do this route or any of these routes for the hard work it com that comes in after, right? Uh, now, you don't wanna just come with a bunch of ideas, you wanna validate the ideas too. So you wanna identify how big the market is, AKA the TAM, right? Total, total addressable market, very, very important thing to do. First thing to do after you kind of zoned in on an idea. Number two is to build an MVP, like a wireframe or a design, like use Envision and kind of build out what you think you want to solve. Like pretend it exists, build it enough to fool somebody to think it exists. And then I want you to talk to potential customers in the space or whatever problem you're solving and show them the product that you've made. Show them that idea. Now I like doing this instead of just asking and validating ideas by talking to potential customers because you will get confirmation bias or you will get lots of feedback. Both are very bad. Why you don't want feedback? Because you're not even sure you wanna build the thing yet, right? Why you don't want confirmation bias is because you don't want more people to tell you things you wanna hear, right? People are always supportive of entrepreneurship and so you end up with one or the other, ultimately you don't know if still the idea is good or not. Um, and so build the wireframe, build the functionality so people can give you concrete feedback. Like, oh, this is cool, but I think you missed something here or, um, is this something I would, I don't know I would pay this much for it. Or like, you know, again, like you can put something concrete on there. And lastly, build a landing page and pretend, and, and pretend that the thing is gonna go out the door in a few months, right? So pre-launch. Uh, this is really important because you can build that audience from, from such an early conception of the idea that will help you determine whether you can get enough demand, you're good enough at marketing and and hype to see if you should even build your idea. Maybe you just get stuck at this phase and you never actually build it. That's not a bad thing. Failing this early, you haven't invested that much time into it. Where imagine you built something, you found you, the right total addressable market and you waited to do marketing until you're ready with the product. Now you're gonna have to struggle to get your customers. Whereas here you can build that audience in advance.